Tomodachi Life was a surreal game. It was one of the best games Nintendo ever made. It was actually the sequel to the Japan exclusive Tomodachi Collection, making it the second game in the series. It holds a special place in the hearts of many, and there's a growing call from fans for Nintendo to give it a sequel on Switch. I know I'm not the only one who's disappointed there was no Tomodachi Life 2 announcement during the February Direct. Ever since the Wii U bombed, Nintendo has tried to distance itself from everything related to it in any way. Even though the Miis originated from the Wii, one of Nintendo's most successful consoles ever, they existed in the Wii U era, so they were basically swept under the rug. The Switch's Mii Maker is buried under multiple layers of menus. The Switch's casual games didn't have Miis in them at all, until Miitopia's port to Switch, at least. I thought the Miis were finally making a return, and that Nintendo was finally recognizing how beloved they were, and that everything would finally be right with the world again. But then, the sports mates attacked. These disgraceful abominations shafted the Miis out of the spotlight in their most iconic and widely known series. In this imaginary sequel to Tomodachi Life, it goes without saying that the sports mates will not make any kind of appearance. But I hate them so much, I said it anyway. It's honestly shocking how much Nintendo has been pushing back against the Miis, especially since they were Miyamoto's passion project that he spent 20 years trying to create. Despite all this, I do think the Tomodachi series will return at some point, whether it's a port of Tomodachi Life, a remaster of it, or an entirely new game. This video will focus on imagining that new game. This game is going to be everything Tomodachi Life was, and more. A true successor. If Nintendo is dead set for selling all of their games for $60 or more, with no exceptions, then this game would have to be exploding with content and be a fully finished game on launch day. But what do we call it? Tomodachi Life 2 would be a weird name since Tomodachi Life itself was kind of a sequel to Tomodachi Collection. So we'll call this game Tomodachi Archipelago. More on why that is later. First, the Miis. The Miis, all their quirky, weird, absurdist greatness is the essence of the Tomodachi series. So let's talk about them. The Mii Maker is great, but we need way more than what we have. We need more options in basically every category. More skin tones, more eyes, more eye colors, more hairstyles, more hair colors, etc. In the Nintendo Switch Mii Maker, the amount of hair colors is pretty huge, and that's a good thing. The main issue is that it basically makes the hair dye item useless. So we'll change it so that the hair dye item can add secondary colors to a Mii's hair, and in different patterns like fades and streaks. Miitopia's makeup system is really cool and provides a wide variety of customization options. But part of the beauty of the Mii Maker was the limitation aspect in a way. The original upgraded Mii Maker from Miitopia on 3DS was a better way to provide more customization and variety to Mii creation without going too far. But even though the Miitopia makeup system as a whole won't be coming to this game, in the Mii Maker at least, aspects of it will. Some entirely new options partially inspired from the makeup system will be coming such as pupils, and a more literal take on makeup with things like eyeshadow, blush, and lipstick. Additionally, an entirely new section for physical disabilities will be added, for example allowing Mii's to be in wheelchairs or not have certain limbs, etc. After creating the physical part of a Mii, next comes… everything else. First and most obviously, age. In Tomodachi life, Mii's are either children or adults, with the age 18 being the threshold and absolutely no complexity outside of the fact that Mii's 18 or above can only date other Miis that are 18 or above. What this means is, an 18 year old me can ask out a 72 year old me, and a 17 year old me can ask out a 10 year old me. Which is just... ew. This issue needs to be rectified immediately. The simplest solution is to simply add more complex age groups. Miis age 12 or younger would be called children, Miis ages 13 to 16 would be called teenagers, Miis ages 17 to 19 would be called young adults, Mii's ages 20 to 49 would be called adults, and Mii's age 50 or older would be called seniors. A Mii would only be able to date another Mii in the same age group. A couple can't get married until both Mii's are 18, and Mii's in the children age group can't date at all. In Tomodachi life, a couple could get around this by using age o but those things could be used on Mii's who are in a relationship already, which is also... you. Besides, I find the whole concept really weird, so neither type of age o will be coming to this game. When it came to determining who will be compatible for relationships in Tomodachi life outside of age, the game prohibited same-sex romances and apparently determined relationship compatibility through birthdays? Or something? Anyway, that won't be the case in this game. Instead, there will be an option to determine what genders, if any, a Mii is attracted to. An actual compatibility between Mii's can be vaguely determined by the player, by picking one personality trait that Mii finds appealing. I'll list the specific traits available to select later in the video. 
And this appealing trait wouldn't be something specific to romantic relationships, but friendships too. Fans have expressed a desire to be able to slightly nudge me's in certain directions when it comes to friendships and relationships. Now when you talk to me in their apartment, you have a few problems you can pick to talk to your me about. One of these problems will allow you to tell your me that you know someone that might be good friends with. Then you can pick another resident from your archipelago, and the me you're talking to will become far more likely to try to befriend that me. Similarly, you can ask a me to set two other me's up to go on a date instead of having to wait for that me to bring that up to you. Both me's will have to be in that resident's friend list to be set up by them. Back to the me maker though, one small change I think deserves to be in the game is more favorite colors. In all variations of the Mii Maker, there has been the same selection of favorite colors. Red, orange, yellow, lime, green, blue, teal, pink, violet, brown, white, and black. This limited selection worked because they were of very little importance. All it did was change the color of a Mii's default outfit. But in the sequel, they could do a little more. Like affecting what clothes and apartment interiors Mii's gravitate towards liking. So giving the pair more options would be pretty nice. Next up, Family Ties. Tomodachi life only allowed the player's lookalike me to be able to determine which other me's it was related to. That means if you have two me's that are related to each other, but not related to the player, those two me's can technically start dating. And that's weird. But being able to determine the exact relation each me has to any and all other me's opens up its own can of worms. Like, should a me that is listed to have two married parents already have those parents married in-game and in a relationship? Does that mean they should already have their own residential house? What happens if they decide to have another baby? Or start to quarrel and divorce? In my opinion, allowing each me to specifically describe the relation to any and all other me's creates way too many problems. So I think the best way to go about this would be to simply allow an option for each me to be able to have select me's they can get in a romantic relationship with, and or are ambiguously marked as a relative. Moving on, the voices. The voice system is one of the funniest aspects of Tomodachi life. It works on hilarious text to speech presets that can also be customized for each me. No one talks about this, but Miitopia's me's don't use this system. Instead, they speak in their own weird little language. <laughs> Sounds like someone put Simlish through an uwu filter. I love it. However, the Texas speech voices are more iconic for the series, so we'll be using those. For this game, we'll add more default voice presets along with more specific accents like British and Australian and what have you. Also, voice effects like scary voice or robotic voice will also be added. When it comes to the actual quality of the voices, they'll be upgraded a little bit, but not too much because they're uniquely comedic. In Tomodachi Life, there are a total of 4 main personality groups with 4 specific trait combinations in each, which adds up to a total of 16 distinct personalities, based on the Maya Briggs personality test. In both Tomodachi Life and Collection, Ami's personality is determined by 5 sliders. In the sequel, there will actually be 8 sliders. The point of adding so many more personality deciding sliders, and not more personalities, is because one of the flaws of Tomodachi Life was how the personalities didn't feel all that distinct. I feel like adding more than 16 personalities would only make that issue worse. Instead, adding more variables of determined personality could allow more ways that meet personalities are unique from each other. This game has 4 main personality groups with 4 specific trait combos, just like Tomodachi Life. The 4 main groups are... Charismatic Tender Bold and Peculiar. Each group has their own 4 personality types just like past games. As I said earlier, when a me is being made, they can decide on a personality trait they find appealing. This would be one of the 4 main personality group types. What I didn't mention is that when a me picks a trait they like, that me will gravitate to having low compatibility with a me that has the opposite trait. For example, a me that likes charismatic me's will dislike peculiar me's and vice versa, and a me that likes tender me's will dislike bold me's and vice versa. A me's own personality would affect a lot about how they interact with the game's features and other me's on the island the food they like and don't like, the clothes they like and don't like, the places on the island they like to visit, and what activities, pastimes, and jobs they take part in. Yes, I did say jobs, but we'll get to that later. Tomodachi Life's Island is great. It offers a lot, but I think more can be done. To truly make Tomodachi Archipelago feel like a proper sequel, and to give the player a better feeling when it comes to long-term progression and working towards something, the island is going to be expanded greatly. In fact, it's not just going to be one island with a little tiny one right next to it. It's going to be a whole posse of islands. In other words, an archipelago. Each location on the island has a fun and unique purpose and have their own slew of events to participate in or watch. Some locations can also have holiday and birthday celebrations held there, and similarly to Tomodachi Life, can become the setting of a confession or proposal. To give a brief overview of each of them, 
the apartments in the neighborhood where Mies live. In Tomodachi life, the maximum amount of Mies was 100, but that's not enough. So now the archipelago will have two apartment buildings and a larger maximum of Mies. Just like in previous games, the Mies start out in their apartment but move to a house in the neighborhood when they get married. But in this game, a Mie will lose their apartment slot when they move. But all their interiors and items will carry over to their house. Town Hall, where Mies can be made and settings can be changed. Pretty self-explanatory. It'll work pretty similar to Tomodachi Life's counterpart, where you can access the Mie Maker, see a list of all residents, change the archipelago's name, etc. A new feature will also be added though. Now, many locations on the archipelago can be swapped around to different places. Not every location can be moved, but many can, allowing for unique archipelago layouts. The plaza, where Mies donate. Every day, Mies donate money to you, giving you more and more money the more you do for them, and depending on the job they have. In basically every location, there will be a bunch of new events that replace old ones, and some old events will swap around to different locations. But not every event is returning. The boutique, where you can buy outfits and hats from Mies. I know some people want an in-depth clothing system like Mitomo, where you can individually buy every aspect of an outfit, but I really don't think that would fit well. In Mitomo, it's nice because you have just the one Mii to take care of, so you have no issues customizing them as specifically as you want. But in this game, you're taking care of hundreds of Mii's. Even just doing the bare minimum and giving your relatively small roster of 100 Mii's a top, bottom, and shoes each would get really tiring really fast. I also don't see the need for a special hat shop, so this store has both outfits and hats. The pawn shop, where treasures can be sold. I wouldn't really change anything about it other than the way it looks because it is ugly. The foodstuff store, where food can be bought. A quick aesthetic touch up and we're pretty much good to go. Of course, many more food items will be added, but I think that kind of goes without saying for basically every location that sells items, holds events, or has a meet doing little activities in locations being viewed. The item emporium, where items can be bought and sold. This is a new addition, but one I think was desperately needed. It would be a small shop that sells a variety of random items every day, so you can get certain items without always having to wait for a me to give it to you, and you can sell items you don't want or need. The compatibility tester, where you can see how compatible two me's are. This incarnation of the compatibility tester is going to work a little differently. First of all, we're we'll booted the compatibility forecast. It felt pretty nice. Secondly, there will be no friendship tester versus a romance tester, it will just be compatibility. Thirdly, and most importantly, the compatibility tester will actually mean something in this game. It will be directly based on which traits both Mies find appealing and unappealing, as well as their favorite colors, their common hobbies, their jobs, and their common friends. It's also not going to be an out-of-game thing either. When you use the tester, both Mies are actually going to be physically at the location, and a Mie will be working there to test them. If two Mies that haven't met are sent by you to be tested, they might start a friendship based on the rating, or if they have met and get a bad rating, they might get less close or even quarrel. This could even be another way to nudge Mies into relationships. The Carnival Fair, where Mies can goof off and have fun. This version of Tomodachi Life's amusement park would be bigger and grander and have more things to do and events to witness. The Beach, where Mies can enjoy themselves in the sun. This beach is losing the little draw on the sand in the game, but has more actual events to participate in now, like piling sand on top of me or keeping a me balanced as they surf. The cafe, where Mies can chat. Instead of hangouts that are fixed agendas, any group of four or less Mies can chat and gossip, and pity parties should happen way more often now because they are seriously funny. The amphitheater, where Mies can perform songs. This souped up version of Tomodachi Life's concert hall allows for far more song genres than before, and a more direct way to affect specific performances. Now you can pick between different dance choreography sets for each song, allowing for super unique and hilarious sequences. The News Tower, where Mies give two daily news reports about high drinks in the archipelago. There's nothing really to add to it as a concept, the news is quite enjoyable already. Just some more curious and weird news stories. The Luxury Bistro, where Mies can have classy dinners. A high-end, five-star, fancy restaurant was really missing in the previous Tomodachi games. Tomodachi Life had a restaurant as a proposal scene setting, but that's not enough. Here, Mies can enjoy top-of-the-line meals in a hip new restaurant with a great view of the archipelago. The park, where Mies can kill time doing pastimes. This is a location where you'll find Mies using the items you give them a lot. The fitness center, where Mies can exercise or rest. This new location adds fun and healthy diversity to the total roster of locations in the game. Mies can work out and do yoga or relax in steam rooms and saunas. Depressed Mies can also be sent to certain locations to help them feel better, and this place is very helpful in that regard. The photo studio, where you can take post pictures of Mies. Tomodachi Life's photo studio was amazing, but it can still be improved. 
Now, photos can be framed and given to use as gifts that will appear on their furniture. To take it a step further, bands or singers that work at the amphitheater might ask you to make posters for them, which will actually show up around the archipelago. And the Country Club, where Mies can play all kinds of sports. This is a large location with places for golf, tennis, playing cards, and a swimming pool. A place to use a lot of the sports-related items Mies can receive would be a lot better than your Mies just having it in their inventory and doing practically nothing with it. The Enchanted Gardens, where Mies can appreciate ancient architecture covered in beautiful plants. In this flowerful location, Mies might take pictures, paint, and do other things according to the artistic items you have given them. I didn't want to mention every idea I had for an event for every location because that would take too long, but this one I did want to share. What if Mies can read freestyle poetry in the form of ridiculous haikus they were in themselves? The High Rise Tower, where Mies can observe the island. This is obviously the counterpart to the Observation Tower, the main difference being the visuals. Now it will resemble something more akin to the Eiffel Tower or Tokyo Tower. It would functionally work very similar to the Observation Tower, but without the quirky questions in the game being something you can start whenever you want, but rather an in-game event that can only be played during certain times. The Office, where Mies can experience dream-killing, 9-5, to pen-pushing jobs. The Office doesn't do much besides providing Mies with a common job that pays well, and like all other places of work, provide unique mini-games. The Petting Zoo, where Mies can see and pet different kinds of animals and where pets can be bought. Pets are implemented very poorly in Tomodachi life, with rent coupons as level-up items that allow them to temporarily play with a dog or a cat. Instead, this game has a dedicated location where animals can be played with or even permanently bought. These pets stay with me forever, and Ami can have up to two. Dogs and cats are not the only options now either. Ami can have dogs, cats, birds, guinea pigs, spiders, lizards, fish, chickens, rabbits, and mice. The pets can even be named and will appear and move around in the apartment and house interiors of their owners. The Hydro Rail, where Mies can leave and return to the archipelago. This underwater crane would go beneath the ocean and connect to the unseen mainland. This would replace the plain slash 3DS image share and would be how Mies leave and get to the island when going on a vacation or when a traveling child Mies returns home. The Forest Campground, where Mies can disconnect from urban life on the archipelago and take a breath of fresh air. Mies will come in groups and enjoy outdoor activities like making s'mores or taking walks in the forest. The Inn, where a Mie from a different island can stay for a day. This is the replacement for Domodachi Life's campground. If you solve enough problems for a traveling me, the last day you're on Pelago, provided you have an empty me slot. The salon, where me can get dolled up. I decided I still wanted to allow some of the really great me creations from Utopia to be in the game, even if I didn't want them in the me maker. So the salon lets you use most of the makeup system and allows you to buy wigs from a small selection every day. The decor and architecture showroom, where apartment room interiors and building exteriors can be bought. Now, most interiors have color schemes that can be changed or unlocked. You can also buy new looks for the outsides of your locations, like a zen garden style park, a modern look for your apartment buildings, or a new fountain and aesthetic for your plaza. Really fun exteriors will be added, like changing your high rise tower to look like your lookalike me, ripping off the Statue of Liberty, or changing your inn to look exactly like the one from Utopia. That's 28 locations. Not every location from previous games will return in the sequel though, like the rankings board and importware. However, as I said before, part of the point of all these new locations is to make the player feel like they're always working towards something. So when you start the game, only a few of these locations will be unlocked. They always need to be unlocked over time. I've mentioned holiday and birthday celebrations, but how can explain what they are? Holiday celebrations are special annual events that take place in specific locations. During these events, special items will go on sale, and these will act differently and do different things. For example, during Christmas, Mings will give gifts to each other, and even to you. During Halloween, many more costumes will go on sale in the boutique, and a lot of Mies may ask you to get them a costume you think they'll like. Holidays will also change some of the decor on the archipelago, like heart decorations everywhere on Valentine's Day. Different versions of the game will have different holiday events set to be on by default, depending on where the player is, but these can be easily changed in settings. Different holiday festivals can be swapped in and out no matter the region. Birthday celebrations are just smaller events for me and their friends on their birthday. Give me a gift to a me during their birthday will level them up automatically by one level, this can only be done once a birthday. Inside of Tomodachi Life's small birthday song cutscene, these celebrations will be bigger and last longer. The archipelago will also change its look depending on what's going on in the outside world. By default, the weather where the player is will also be the weather on in the archipelago. And the outside world's current season, according to the player's region, will also change the archipelago's appearance. The weather and season will have direct effects on the Mii's behavior. When it rains, Mies will be less likely to go outside and walk around with umbrellas. In the summer, Mies will ask you to buy them warmer clothing. It will even affect the locations, like the pond in the park freezing over in the winter, allowing Mies to ice skate. 
be settings can be changed or turned off at the town hall. Locations can also be upgraded now. When you use a facility enough, it will eventually upgrade, getting bigger and more useful. Like the food stuff store allowing a bigger variety of food every day, and the office paying more money to its employees. Finally, jobs. Some jobs Ami can simply apply for, like working at the office, the food stuff store, or the pawn shop. Ami might ask you where you think they should apply to work, or might ask if you think a specific place they had in mind would be right for them. Whether or not Ami gets a job they apply for is based on a few factors. First of all, each job has its own thing Ami can do to get become more likely to get that job. Like if Ami owns at least 10 outfits, they'll be more likely to be accepted to work at the boutique. Secondly, Ami's personality comes into play. If Ami has a personality that fits the job they want to work at, they'll be more likely to get that job. Finally, it's still based on chance. Ami that owns zero unique apartment interiors and doesn't have the right personality can still get a job at the architecture showroom. And just because Ami is rejected from a place of work, it doesn't mean they'll never be able to apply there again. You can even nudge me to get jobs or switch jobs when you talk to them as one of the available default prompts. Some jobs can be applied for normally though. For example, if Ami wants to work as a performer in the amphitheater, they can't just apply for that job. They need to be given songs to perform first. Other jobs don't necessarily need to correspond to location. Ami who's been given enough sewing machines will become a freelance fashion designer. Ami who's been given a superhero costume and have multiple superhero dreams will become an actual superhero and be spotted in the news. Real quick, while we're on the topic of dreams though, you will finally be able to wake up sleeping these. It's so stupid you couldn't do this before. Some locations could also have multiple jobs that Ami could get. A fitness center could have both exercise coaches and massage therapists as available jobs, and the office could have both an employee position and a boss position. Here's a bunch of quick features that don't really fit anywhere else to close up. The soundtrack will feature a bunch of new songs in the iconic Wii music style that give up the same quirky new vibes as the classics. However, many songs from previous games will be returning as remixes or remade versions to preserve some of that nostalgia factor. One user can have up to three different save files slash archipelagos, so you don't have to erase your entire island if you want to change something. The level up gifts in Tomodachi Life were mostly useless. Mies rarely use them when they basically did nothing. Now they'll all have uses, like the metal detector will allow me to find items that they might end up giving to you. This last idea is one that many people have already had, and I think it's great. Now, the screen can be controlled in 3D to look around your archipelago, and you can even zoom into it to see your Mies walking around and doing things. That's pretty much all my main ideas. Tomodachi Life seriously needs a sequel on Switch, and even though Nintendo really doesn't seem to want to make one, I'm still holding out hope that they will. I was inspired to make this video by others like it I've seen, and I'll link a few of my favorites in the description. Thank you for watching. Here's hoping the next Nintendo Direct will reveal the next game in the Tomodachi series. Honestly, I'd settle for a port of Tomodachi Life to the Switch at this point. Anyway, goodbye.